So in this short video, what we'll do is we'll solve an example of valuing an interest rate swap and we'll try and do it using the two methods which are introduced to us in this reading. The first method is via bonds and the second method is by the actual estimation of an expected LIBOR rate. Okay, so that's what we call the FRA method. So what we'll try and convince ourselves is that both these methods arrive at the same answer for the value of the swap and what we'll try and sort of recount is what all steps that we have to keep in mind for each of these two methods okay so let's begin with the easier of the two methods and that's the bond method so let's begin so we are given a swap whose notional is 100 million and the exchanges happen every six months the swap rate when the swap was initiated was 7% per annum and this is compounded semi-annually and has a remaining life of 10 months. So if it's 10 months of remaining life and it's six monthly exchanges, it means that there are two exchanges left. So currently the average of the bid offer rate being exchanged for six month LIBOR in swaps of all maturities is 5% per annum. And this one is given to be continuously compounded. The six month LIBOR rate it's given to us was 4.6% per annum. This was two months ago. That means on the last fixing date. So what is the current value of the swap to the party paying floating and to the party paying fixed? Well, to the party paying fixed would just be the negative of the party paying floating. Okay, so let's try and get the value from this guy's perspective. So let's begin with First things first, drawing out the cash flow diagram for this swap. So I said there are two cash flows remaining. Let me draw the timeline first. So there would be one cash flow which happens 10 months from today. And there will be one come back six months from that point that will happen four months from today. Okay. And I'm assuming that I am standing here. And let's draw it back a little. So this was the period which was the this was the point at which we exchanged these two cash flows last time around. And at that point in time, I am told that the LIBOR was 4.6%. Okay, so I am valuing this swap from the perspective of the party paying floating. So in this cash flow diagram, let's put all the floating cash flows in the downward direction because I'm paying floating. So let's do that. And let me put all the fixed cash flows upwards because I am receiving these cash flows. So since I'm doing the bond method here, let's try and do it as the difference between two bonds. It will be a fixed rate bond and a floating rate bond. So this party from whose perspective I'm valuing this swap would be long the fixed rate bond and it will be short the floating rate bond. Okay, so this payment would be computed using the LIBOR which was set on the last payment date and we are given that that LIBOR was 4.6%. Let's do this. Let's try and put values next to these cash flows. So this guy would be a cash flow which is 7% because we will be doing it at the swap rate times the notional which is 100 million times the settlement period which is 0.5 okay so this would come to therefore 3.5 million same happens here this also is 3.5 million okay this guy would be computed using 4.6 percent remember the LIBOR is fixed on the start of the period and paid at the end of the period so it will be 4.6 percent this times 100 million this times 0.5 so this comes to 2.3 million now this guy, what do I do about this? This guy will be a cash flow which will depend on the LIBOR that is observed on this day, but this day is still in the future. I don't know what this LIBOR will be and hence I don't know what this cash flow will be. But as far as this method is concerned, the bond method, I really don't need to worry about this cash flow. Okay. So let's do this. Let's write down the value of this swap from the perspective of, let's say, party A. This party A is floating rate payer and fixed rate receiver. And this will be, therefore, 
the value of a fixed rate bond minus because my I have a short position in the floating rate bond okay now let's do this let's value a fixed rate bond whose coupons are 3.5 million and whose face value is the notional amount of the swap which is 100 million what will that be it will be 3.5 that's the first coupon discounted to today so what rate do I use for discounting? So it's a flat term structure and I'll take it as 5% per annum with continuous compounding. So 3.5, so I'll do it as e to the power minus 0 0.05, this times 4 by 12, plus there's a 3.5 sitting at 10 months. I need to also add to it the principal, so that'll make it 103.5 e to the power minus 0 0.05 this times 10 by 12 so this is the value of the fixed rate bond minus how do i value the floating rate bond the value of the floating rate bond remember this as a rule of thumb is equal to the the notional of this bond or the face value of this bond on any reset date the date on which it pays out its coupon but provided one condition is true and that condition is that the rate at which the coupon is decided or computed should be the same rate at which you are discounting the bond <clears throat> otherwise this rule will not hold now in any case right now this rule will not hold for us it will not be equal to the face value or par value because we are not on the reset date as of today we are already ahead of the reset date by two months we know this that at this date when we arrive at this date and the bond after it has paid off this 2.3 million its value will come back to its power value which is its face value so we can write down then <coughs> its value on this date after the payment of this 2.3 million has been done and that we know would be 100 million okay so the total value before this coupon is to be paid out would be 100 plus 2.3 that will be 102.3 and let's discount it to today so that will make it as 102.3 discounted to today again at five percent for a period of four months and that comes to this okay if you were to punch in these numbers in your calculator do the calculations you would get the answer as 2.11 million this is the value of the swap to a which is a party which pays floating and the value of the swap to B would be minus 2.11 million, okay? So this is valuing of this swap using the bond method. So now let's do this. Let's now try and value this using the FRA method. Let's try that, okay? So in the FRA method, we would need to now worry about that second cash flow on the floating leg. Let's try it again. So this is the 10 month point. This is the four month point. So at this point, I have a 3.5 million. At this point also, I have a 3.5 million. This is as of today. Here I have a 2.3 million. And this guy, I don't know what it is. Okay, so for this guy, I would need the LIBOR on this day. Let's call it L. So what is the LIBOR on this day? To get to this LIBOR on this day, we can do this. We can assume that the expected value of this LIBOR is the same as the forward rate as of today for this period. So we'll assume that the expected value of this LIBOR this is random because I'll only get to know this LIBOR when I reach on that day. And we are saying, let this expected value of this random rate, which I don't know yet, let this be equal to the forward rate in this period as observed from the term structure of interest rates as of today. Now, our life is easy here because the term structure which has been given to us is a flat term structure, which is 5% per annum with continuous compounding. If this was, let's say, a proper term structure in which rates vary with time, please make sure that you get this forward rate from that term structure the right way, okay? 
the point where we stand is we are saying the expected value of LIBOR is equal to this forward rate and this is 5% per annum. But there's one problem here. The problem here is that LIBOR, the one which I'll use as the rate that will be you know, entering into the computation of this cash flow will be a rate that is following this compounding frequency. But the rate which I am proposing is one with continuous compounding. So before we move ahead, we need to convert this rate to a semi-annually compounded rate. So let's do that. So our relationship that will help us do it would be e to the power 0 0.05 into 1. That means let's equate the capitalization factor using the two different compounding frequencies for let's say a common period of one year. So this will be from continuous compounding, it will be e to the power 0 0.05 into 1. From semi-annual compounding, it will be 1 plus r by 2 whole square. This is the unknown r I am looking for. So what you can do is, you can solve for this and what you will get is, r is equal to 5.063%. Okay. Now, this is the expected rate from the currently observed term structure of rates and now I can use the FRA method. So I am not here using bonds. So there are no principal payments that I have to include it here. Okay. So what do I do? Calculate the net payment on the four month date and the net payment on the 10 month date and that will discount it to today give you the value of the swap. So value of the swap to A would therefore be 3.5 minus 2.3 discounted to today plus it will be 3.5 minus what's the second payment it's 5.063% this times 100 million this times 0.5 e to the power minus 0 0.05 into 10 by 12. If you were to do this set of calculations, you would you can confirm this to yourself that you again get this number 2.11 million. The key point which you have to note here is that first of all, both these approaches give us the same answer, number one. Number two, you have to note here that when we find this expected LIBOR rate, something that we could have avoided had we used the bond method, please do make sure that the number which you compute has the same compounding frequency as the LIBOR which enters the swap cash flow computation. That means it should be the same frequency as the frequency at which the settlements of this swap happens. Okay, so if your rates have been offered to you in continuous compounding, make sure that you convert them to the right compounding frequency before you compute this value. Otherwise, your answer would not match the answer from the bond method. Okay, so this was about comparing two separate approaches, the bond approach and the FRA approach and convincing ourselves that we get the same answer using both.